Welcome back to Introduction to Machine Learning. I'm Ludwig Botmann and in this video I will speak about splitting criteria for regression trees. At the end you should understand how to define split criteria via empirical risk minimization and you should understand how to find splits in regression when we choose DL2 loss as a loss. By now you should already know how a regression tree looks like. We had two different visualizations. Here on the left hand side you can clearly see this tree structure. We have the root node that is split into left and right child nodes recursively. And on the right hand side you see for this regression example of one feature and numerical target variable how the prediction function looks like. Now the question is how can we find those splitting rules? So why did we split here and there and there? And the answer is empirical risk minimization which is great because we already know about this a little bit. What is an optimal constant in the leaf? So the idea here is to that the split is good if each child's point predictor reflects its data well. So what does it mean for a point predictor to reflect its data well? Okay, so for each child we predict in that child node with an optimal constant. And this optimal constant may for example be the mean value. So just the mean of the y values if we choose the L2 loss as a loss. So if we choose the L2 loss, so y minus constant squared and then we sum up those losses for getting the risk, then the optimal constant is the mean. We will not treat here the proof why this is the case. We do this in advanced risk minimization, but for now you can just accept or perhaps you already know that the mean is a pretty good predictor if we choose the L2 loss. So if we have a look at the root node here in this plot then you can see that the optimal constant prediction is just exactly the mean value of all the target variables. So we did not split the data here at all. And now we can ask ourselves how should we choose how should we split this root node now? So here we have two examples, perhaps none of them is the best, but we can at least decide which of them is better. So we have one on the left hand side split it by 2.5 and on the right hand side we split it at 5 point something. Okay, so this means we divide the feature space into root nodes n1 and n2 and in other child nodes and one and a two and in other child nodes and one and a two on the right hand side. Now how com can we compare which of these two splits is better? <clears throat> we can simply compute the risk in both sides. Okay? So let's start with the left hand side. Let's call this one. And now with this split at x j equals 2.5 we have split the feature space into something that where xj is smaller than 2.5 and we call this n1 and in something where xj is smaller or equal than 2.5 we'll call this n2. And in each of these nodes we can compute an optimal constant prediction. On the left hand side that's more or less one point something, on the right hand side that's minus 0 0.8 more or less. And then with these optimal constant predictions we can compute a risk on the left hand side and a risk on the right hand side. Okay, So we have a risk here and we have a risk there. And for getting a total risk well we just sum the two values. So we have 23.4 plus 72.4 gives some result here. And we can do the exact same thing for the right hand side plot. So let's call this 2. And here the splitting is different. So we have different nodes n1 and n2 leading to different op optimal constants. And those optimal constants lead to different risks. 78.1 and 46.1. And again we can sum up those two risks here. And now based on the sum of squared errors here 
We prefer the first split because 95.8 is smaller than 124.1. Okay, so we just compared two possible split points and we computed the risk of the tree that would result by splitting at those split points. Now we want to do this for even more possible split points, of course. So here is another example of a feature of a numerical feature and a numerical target. So we have still a regression trust, a regression task, of course. And here we just plot the risk of those two splits. And we can do this for even more possible split points. And for each split point, we get one risk. Okay, and the risk is as on two slides before the sum of the risks in those two child nodes, so left of the split point and right of the split point. And then we get here nice univariate optimization problem. So we have a risk, the risk on the y-axis, still the feature on the x-axis. And then we can just look for the arc min of the risk here and we see that apparently splitting here is optimal in the sense of empirical risk. Let's formalize this a little bit. N is not only the node or a node, but it's also the data contained in this node. Okay, so we kind of set those equal here. So we have a node N. Let's call the predicted constant in that node C with subscript N. And then the risk for a node is called R of N. It's just the sum over the individual losses. So we sum over all data points in this node <clears throat> and we sum up the losses of, well, these data points here with respect to this optimal constant prediction CN. And then if we, okay, let's clean this a little bit here. And the optimal constant is then derived by the arc min of this risk here with respect to C. So we are looking for the constant that minimizes this sum here. And then this is the optimal constant model. If we take the L2 loss, then we already know that the optimal constant is the mean. And for example, for the L1 loss, the optimal constant would be the median of the target values. And for other loss functions, we also know this from just theoretical considerations, but we can also just perform a simple univariate optimization and find it empirically. Now we call N1 and N2 those child nodes that result by splitting the parent node N into two parts. N1 is the set of observations that are in this parent node, of course, and where the feature value xj is smaller than t. And n2 is more or less the same thing, but we have a greater or equal than t on the right-hand side. So n1 and n2 are the child nodes, and we can compute the risk of the splitting, let's say, <clears throat> of the new finer model by just summing up the two risks and the left child node and then the right child node. So the overall risk is just the sum of the two things here. And well, the risk of N1 is, as you've seen on the last slide, just the sum over this, these loss functions. So finding the best way to split N into N1 and N2 means solving this problem here. We are looking for the arc min of the risk with respect to two things, okay? Perhaps I have to explain what J and T is again. So J refers to the feature, XJ, and T refers to the split point of this feature. Okay, so basically we would have to look at all possible split points of all features. And then we could choose the best resulting risk and the combination of J and T leading to that best risk is then the optimal split point. As last notion here, we have a weighted version of risk here. So what we did for 
finding the risk of a model is we did just sum up the two risks in the child nodes, okay? And this makes total sense if R is a simple sum. However, we could also define the risk to be not the sum of the loss functions, but to be the mean of the loss functions. Okay, we call this thing then R with a bar on the top of the R. If we do that, then we cannot just sum up the two risks to, to get the total risk, but we have to weight these risks with the proportion of observations in the two nodes. Okay, so if a node has more observations, then the weight of the risk in this node should be higher than in the other node. We mentioned this here for clarity, more than because we will make a lot of use by this, because quite a few texts only compare this more complicated weighted formula without clearly explaining what this is and, and why we need this. And so to make you aware of this, uh, we've made the slide. And so if you see this weighted formula, then you already know that what comes after the weights, so these R bar and one and R bar and two, are weighted, are mean risks and not summed risks.